Good evening. Adequate notice of this meeting of the Berkeley Heights Board of Education was given as required by the Open Public Meeting Act as follows. Notice of the revised, <coughs> excuse me, revised 2022 Board of Education meeting schedule was sent to the Star Ledger and the Courier News on February 2nd, 2022. On September 15th, 2022, notice of the revised Board of Education meetings through January 5th, 2023 was sent to the Star Ledger and the Courier News and was also provided to all schools, PTO presidents, the BHEA president, and posted at the administration building. A copy was also provided to the public library and filed with the municipal Kirk. Julie, roll call, please. Mrs. Akiri. Mr. Chanchuli. Here. Dr. Forger. Mr. Hyman. Here. Mrs. Penna. Present. Mrs. Stanley. Mrs. Young. Here. Mr. Dequilla. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. Adjourn to executive session. Whereas the Berkeley Heights Board of Education seeks to adjourn to executive session in full compliance with the Open Public Meeting Act, NJSA 10 colon 4 6 at all. And whereas the Open Public Meeting Act provides that a public body may exclude the public from the portion of the meeting at which it discusses matters related to those identified below. Matters rendered confidential by federal law, state law, or court law, individual privacy, collective bargaining agreements, purchase or lease of real property if public interest could be adversely affected, investment of public funds if public interest could be adversely affected, tactics or techniques utilized in protecting public safety and property, pending or anticipated litigation, attorney client privilege, personnel employment matters affecting specific prospective or current employees. Be it resolved that the Berkeley Heights Board of Education adjourns to executive session to discuss matters related to personnel and students and be it further resolved that the minutes of the discussion of any of these items will be disclosed to the public when matters have been determined and confidential confidentiality is no longer applicable. Can I have a motion to adjourn to executive session? So moved. Can I? Uh, any discussion? Second. No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. Abstain? We are adjourned to executive session. We'll be back at 7.30. Thank you. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hey, thank you. Uh, Julie, board correspondence, please. We've received um, two emails about the school calendar, uh, email correspondence about the building thinking classrooms, one about security, one regarding OPRAS, the uh, one about the superintendent's update from November 21st, and uh, there was a donation from the Booster Club uh, that I will discuss further in my report. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Julie. Uh, student representative, Catherine. Oh. Oh. I want to congratulate Catherine for getting into Princeton University. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hi everyone. Um, I will start off by mentioning that based on the fire drill that GL students had in the snow today, we can safely conclude that winter is almost here. Um, and before heading off to winter break, students have finished off school in 2022 on a strong note. So here are some highlights. At the Highlander Honors Night in early December, many juniors and seniors were inducted into the various honor societies at GL like Mu Alpha Theta, Quill and Scroll, and Tri M. For art and music students at GL, these have been an exciting past few weeks. The GL Hilltop players announced their spring musical last week. This year, they will be performing Freaky Friday, a story about a mother and daughter who magically switch bodies, but have only one day to fix things before it becomes permanent. Auditions for the musical were yesterday and today, and the GL Dance Club was kind enough to offer dance lessons to help students prepare for their auditions. This Tuesday, the GL Orchestra and choir students put on an amazing winter concert. Select band members also joined the orchestra to perform a symphony piece, which was Tchaikovsky's Swan Lake. Today, GL's brand new drum circle club met during lunch. The drum circle club is led by senior Danny Whalen and advised by Mr. Ellis, one of the band teachers here. I think he's with us tonight. Might be, not sure. Um, oh, gotcha. All right. Um, he's one of the band teachers and 
In this club, students will have the opportunity to learn how to play the drums in a casual environment. In terms of visual arts, the National Honor Society students are, and engineering students collaborated to run a stand at the Berkeley Heights Winter Walk where they laser engraved ornaments for children to decorate. Kids and parents had a blast learning about laser engraving and showing off their artistic skills. For some other clubs, students are meeting during lunch to prepare for competitions next year. The GL Science Bowl team, led by junior Justin Liu, met to work through practice questions in preparation for the National Science Bowl regional competition, which will be hosted by the Princeton Plasma Physics Laboratory in February of 2023. The Technology Student Association Club met to form teams for next year's regional engineering competition. The Model UN Club will be holding a mock conference next Tuesday to practice their conferencing skills by discussing ways to colonize Mars, an out of this world topic. <laughs> now, a big part of the winter holiday season is about giving back to the community and many GL students are doing their part to achieve this goal. The Operation Smile Club gathered to make sock puppets for speech pathologists, which will be helpful for teaching young children how to form sounds. On December 10th, the Interact Club held a toy sorting event for the Elizabeth Shelter at the Berkeley Heights Town Hall. The Jewish Student Action Team ran a bagel sale and donated all profits to the Los Angeles Holocaust Museum. Looking ahead, we have an exciting event going on tomorrow, and that is the Winter Culture Walk. This will be an opportunity for students to set up tables during lunch to spread awareness for different cultures and their traditions. Now, um, I know that I just read off an impressive list of activities here, but let's be honest, I think the most impressive thing that students accomplished this month was learning how to balance two of the most important things, and that's school and the World Cup. <laughs> All right, <laughs> thank you. And um, since Jake, the other student representative, couldn't be here tonight, he's at his first basketball game for the winter season this year, um, I will be reading his report. All right, good evening. Today's report will be on the shorter side as November to December uh, was the transition period from the fall to the winter sports. Most of the winter sports started today, which is why Jake is absent tonight. Um, and because of this, there will be no athletes of the month at this time. So for each sport this season, I will provide more of a preview of this month's report. The Highlander wrestling team is led by coach Rick Ortega. The team had a very successful 17 and three season and made it all the way to the NJSIAA tournament final. The team opens this Saturday. The GL boys basketball team went 16 and five last season and are led by head coach, Chris Loeffler. The team went undefeated in their division last year. They took to keep that streak this year as their season starts tonight at Dayton. The girls basketball team led by head coach, Chris Eckert went 16 and seven and nine and one in their division last year. The team opens today versus Union Catholic. The ice hockey team, led by head coach Greg Jensen, went 18 and 16 with one tie last season and won their first ever state championship. The team made a, a head coaching change this year as Jensen took over and the team has got off to a good two and one start. Uh, look for the team to go deep this season as junior Brady Silverman returns, who had 24 goals on varsity in his freshman year. The boys and girls fencing team is led by head coach Michael Wang. The boys fencing went eight and six last season and the girls team went seven and five and one. Uh, the team is eager and determined to do better this year. The boys and girls swim team is led by head coach David Kloss. The boys team went nine and three and the girls team went seven and five last year. Both teams are one and zero this season with their opener victory against Elizabeth. The cheerleading team is led by head coach Danielle Ganelli. The team cheers at winter events and competes at some competitions. Thank you. I hope my Jake impression is good. <laughs> <laughs> great, great job. Any questions for Catherine on her two reports? Catherine, is there a date for the spring musical or TBD? Yes, I wrote it down. Um, it is Thursday, March 23rd at seven, Friday, March 24th at seven, and Saturday, March 25th at 2 p.m. and 7 p.m. Thank you. Yeah, of course. So Catherine, again, congratulations on making it to Princeton. Thoroughly enjoyed your reports over the last year and a half. This will be one of the things I will miss by not being here, so great job. Uh, Dr. Barley. Good evening. I'm gonna make my statement short because we have a lot of people here to um, do some fun things for us. 
as um, this is both the last meeting of 2022 and also the last meeting of two of our current members, I wanna take a moment to thank you. Thank all of the board members who gave their time to serve. This is a volunteer position that requires a lot of work and is frequently thankless. I commend all of you for your hard work, time, and commitment to making the district a better place for the children of Berkeley Heights and Mountainside. For our two departing members, Mr. DeQuilla, I know that the three years you have had have not been easy, especially the last one where you took on the extra responsibility of being the president. On behalf of the entire district, thank you for your hard work, dedication, and service. Mrs. Zakiri is not present, but it is important to acknowledge her willingness to volunteer her time Putting herself out somewhere in the public domain is never easy. Thank you for your service, Ms. Akiri. Moving on to the crafting of the school calendar, which I'm sure everyone is hanging on the, side, the edge of their seats about. It's usually, it always is a fraught process. Everyone has their own preferences for the start of school, vacation schedules, observ observances of specific holidays, and we are required to be in school for 180 days. Um, we also have contractual obligations that impact the structure of our calendar. In response to some feedback, we sent out a second survey of three calendars for cho for, to choose from. The calendar closed, the survey closed yesterday at noon. So the staff favored calendar version one. And um, do you have, you have that? So he, uh, I did add Mr. Dr. Greer as a collaborator. So he can show, this is a staff one. So if you um, see how many people voted. Yeah. Oh, uh, can you hover over 51? So 120 staff members voted for version one. If you'll go to version two, Dr. Greer. 24, version, version two was not very popular. Um, and then version three had 91. So with a 51% um, lead, came in version one. So if you go to the, the parent calendar, the response is there. So 313 family members voted for version one, which is the pre-Labor Day start, but the later spring break. Version two had 91 who voted for version two, and then for version three was 255. So it is not on the agenda tonight, but it will be on the January 12th agenda for board approval version one will. So um, it is now my pleasure to in introduce Laurie Scott. She will introduce the remaining um, members that we have presenting tonight. Yeah, that's fine. Perfect. Oh, good. It's working. Um, this is a brand new acapella group that was started by our new chorus teacher, new choir teacher, Luke Verblewski, and he's going to bring them up now. They're called Glissando. Um, and in front of you today is the, oh, should I repeat myself? Okay, uh, hi, good evening, everyone. Um, it's an incredible honor to be here. As previously stated, my name is Luke Robleski, and in front of you are 11, right now, 11 uh, choir students or vocal students who uh, elected to be a member of this uh, awesome, unique experience. We've never had a acapella group here at Governor Livingston High School. Um, and being that was something that I loved in college, um, I wanted to bring it here. Um, and these 11 students are awesome, incredibly musical, incredibly fun, and uh, they make this uh, extremely rewarding. We performed uh, two days ago at the uh, choir concert, the choir orchestra concert, uh, our first 
first performance ever. I think it went over very well. Um, and that's not the only time we're performing. Actually, uh, we got accepted to our very first competition ever as well. So you can catch us February 25th at Bayonne High School. And we'll be doing uh, a little bit of different repertoire, some fun stuff. But tonight, uh, we'll do some winter classics. Um, our beatboxer actually could not make it tonight, so I will be fulfilling that role to the best of my ability. Uh, this is Winter Wonderland, sung by Glissanda. We hope you enjoy. Are you ready? Slay. One, two, one, two, three. Slay, bell, ring, are you listening? In the lanes, always listening. A beautiful sight for happy tonight. Walking in a winter wonderland. Gone away, the new bird keeps saying, the new bird. He sings our songs as we go along. Walking in a winter wonderland. Oh, that a little snowman. Snowman. And that little horse and brown. Say, are you married? Let's say, no, man. No, but you can do the job. You're in town. Later on, you're the tire. That's a dream by the fire. The face of rain, the plans that we made. Walking in a winter wonderland. Say, bells ring. Are you listening? In the rain, not a Thank you so much. And <laughs> we didn't practice the walk off this time. That uh, was amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Great. Excellent job. The brass choir. They already went. Oh, oh those all right. That was the pre-music. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. We'll turn it over to Angela for recognition of Mr. Dequila's service to the Board of Education. Okay, well, that was a really tough act to follow, but I'll do my best. <laughs> okay. uh, I just wanted to take time to say a few words on behalf of Mike Dequilla. Can you hear me? And thank him for his service and dedication to the Berkeley Heights Public Schools. When Mike and I joined the Board of Education in January 2020, I didn't know Mike very well. I knew of him from his time serving on the town council, but not on a personal level. Working with him these last three years on the Board of Education, particularly this year as his vice president, I've come to know and admire him for his kindness, care, thoughtfulness, and professionalism. Mike has always focused on doing the right thing, regardless of the personal outcome. Over the last three years, the district has met with unprecedented challenges, starting with COVID-19, three months into Mike's term, and continued for the duration of his three-year ter three term. Mike has always taken his responsibilities very seriously, and work diligently and professionally with each board task on finance and facilities committee, as chair of personnel communications, strategic planning and technology committees, and finally as president of the Board of Education. Above all, Mike's primary focus 
has always been what is best for the students, teachers, and families of the Berkeley Heights Public School. When Mike stepped up as president this year, when nobody else was willing to take on the challenge, despite his demanding professional career, it has been his ability to remain calm, focus on the task at hand, and make thoughtful and thorough decisions, not allowing the chaos and noise to deter him from making the often very difficult decisions that were required by board president. It is these great qualities that has shown as a leader, that he has shown as a leader, that I believe has steered our board through our most challenging year. Mike, it has been my honor and privilege not only to work with you on the Board of Education these last three years, but also to get to know you on a personal level. I'm pleased to be able to call you my friend. Thank you again for all your hard work and dedication to making our Berkeley Art Schools better. And I wish you and your family well and all the best success for your future endeavors. Thank you. Thank you. I believe some of the board members would like to say a few words as well. Joy? Around, Robin, we can start. So, Mike, <laughs> I'll be brief. Um, you have spent the past three years sharing your talents and insights to support activities and support of all children and staff in our district. Thank you for your countless volunteer hours and the energy spent well beyond the monthly meetings to do work as board member as well as board president. Many thanks to your family, if they're watching, which I'm sure they're not. Oh, wait, 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 wait. hey, I'm gonna to turn to you. Many thanks to your family for sharing him with us um, and the community of Berkeley Heights and Mountainside. We know that it's not just him expending energy, it's you as well. So we thank you for that. And may your holiday season be filled with joy and may 2023 and beyond prove to be healthy and prosperous for you and your family. Thank you, Mike, appreciate it. I wanna thank you, Mike, for stepping up this year as board president during an especially demanding, important and challenging year. You perform your responsibilities utilizing a good amount of balance, common sense, and thought. The importance of these qualities in a leader cannot be underestimated. Thank you, Mike, and I wish you well. In fairness, I, I wrote this thinking Angela was going to read it, so <laughs> it, it, it's written in, in the wrong tense. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Uh, ordinarily, I would just riff, but Mike, uh, it's been an honor and a privilege to, to work alongside you the last few years uh, and to see you step up as a leader for the district this past year specifically. Uh, these are not easy times or easy issues that we deal with. Uh, and Mike, I'm sure you would agree that um, we as a board, we haven't aced every test, uh, but no one aces every test in, in these seats. Uh, personally, I'll miss the class and the dignity with which Mike has gone about his responsibilities. Uh, you've learned quickly. You've taken the post seriously. You've pivoted when pivots were needed. And I think you brought stability to the best of your ability. And I just want to thank you for your genuine focus and dedication to the children of Berkeley Heights and Mountainside. And I know I'll miss you a lot and uh, wish you well. Thank you. Thanks. I'm going to read the resolution. Does Mike come up? Yes, Mike. Whereas Mike, can you hear me? Yeah. Whereas Michael Jaquilla is a resident of Berkeley Heights, New Jersey, and whereas Michael has been a member of the Berkeley Heights Board of Education, dedicating himself to providing for the educational needs of the students in the Berkeley Heights Public Schools. And whereas Michael has served as a member of the Berkeley Heights Board of Education with distinction from January 2020 through December 2022. And whereas Michael has been an active member of the Berkeley Heights community and has raised and educated his children within the school system. And whereas Michael has been a valued contributor to the Berkeley Heights Board of Education for three years, including his participation in the work of the following committees, personnel communications chair, strategic planning chair, technology chair, recreation commission, booster club, and finance and facilities. Whereas Michael has guided the Berkeley Heights public schools serving in a leadership role for the last year as the Board of Education President. And now, therefore, be it resolved 
that the Berkeley Heights Board of Education hereby recognizes Michael DeQuilla for his contributions to the students of the Berkeley Heights Public Schools and thanks him for his service to the communities of Mountainside and Berkeley Heights. And be it further resolved, the Berkeley Heights Board of Education wishes Michael continued success and happiness in all of his future endeavors. Signed and sealed this the 15th day of December of the year 2022. be brief because I know we have a lot of stuff to get through tonight. Now I just want to say thank you very much to everybody, to my fellow board members, Dr. Barley, Dr. Greer, Mary Beth, Julie. We went through a lot this year and um, you know, again, I am going to miss it. I truly am going to miss it. To my wife and kids, thank you so much for all your support. It's been a tough year, but looking forward to getting some free time back. Um, it's funny, three years ago, you know, who would have thought what we'd be dealing with, you know, COVID-19, Zoom, what something you thought would zoom into your, you know, make screens bigger, not video, what we had to live through for a year and a half and everything. You know, I'm glad to be part of a district where we pivoted on a moment's notice to go virtual, what we had to do to do what we have to do to keep the education going. You know, full day kindergarten, everything that we got accomplished this last year is remarkable. So thank you very much. Appreciate all your support and happy holidays. Okay, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Greer and Ms. Kopaz for the. Do we have the... to do the. Um, the... Oh, oh, sorry. Wait, hold on. We do. No, we do have a resolution for Ms. Akiri. I will turn it over to Mr. DeQuilla. Unfortunately, Sai was not able to be with us tonight, but I do want to recognize her for all her, again, stepping up for filling uh, the one year term. Uh, so uh, we do have a resolution for it. Whereas Sai Akiri is a resident of Berkeley Heights, New Jersey. And whereas Sai has been a member of the Berkeley Heights Board of Education, serving the educational needs of the students in the Berkeley Heights Public Schools. And whereas Sai has served as a member of the Berkeley Heights Board of Education from January 2022 through December 2022. And whereas Sai has been an active member of the Berkeley Heights community and has raised and educated her children within the school system. And whereas Sai has been a contributor to the Berkeley Heights Board of Education for one year, including her participation and work on the following committees, negotiations, curriculum, and strategic planning. And now therefore be it resolved that the Berkeley Heights Board of Education hereby recognizes Sai Carey for her contribution to the students of Berkeley Heights Public Schools and thanks her for her service to the communities of Mountainside and Berkeley Heights. And be it further resolved that the Berkeley Heights Board of Education wishes Sai success and happiness in all of her future endeavors Signed and sealed this 15th day of December of, of the year 2022. So again, thank you, Sai. Hopefully you're watching along at home. But again, thank you for all your hard work this past year. Back to you. And now I'll turn it over to Dr. Greer and Ms. Kopaz. Thank you, Dr. Varley. Good evening, everyone. Thank you to members of our Board of Education. We have with us our administrative team as well, uh, as Mrs. Kopaz, who is here. We have Mrs. Lori Scott, uh, Mr. Drew Ziobro, and Mr. Dennis Tagunis, who is our new uh, supervisor of science. So that might be the new face here. I know that uh, Mrs. Scott and Mr. Ziobro have been with us in the past before. Uh, we're here to present tonight on two assessments that were uh, taken by our students. One last year is called the New Jersey Graduation Proficiency Assessment, sometimes known as NJGPA, and the Start Strong assessments that were taken by our students earlier in this fall. So one of the things to know, we'll talk first about the NJGPA. One of the things to know, it is a new assessment that was given for the first time last year to all juniors. Um, it consists of an ELA and a mathematics portion, um, and it is part of a graduation, moving forward, a graduation assessment requirement. On Tuesday, July 5th, 22, Governor Murphy uh, signed a law stating that the Board of Education was to administer this as a field test for our students last year. So what that means is there is no graduation assessment requirement for our students that are supposed to graduate with the graduating class of 2023. Uh, more information can be found on the NJ Assessment Resource Center website. The information that you see here, remembering that it was a field test given for the first time this past year, um, it's broken into passing or not passing. You can see here there were 219 students in the junior year class, 55% passing in ELA, 77% in mathematics, and all results were 66%. 
Tomorrow, the Department of Education will be releasing assessment data for us to be able to dig in a little bit deeper to disaggregate. This is the work that our team is doing consistently as we're working with our teams of educators um, as we look at data to see how they're doing. Here it is, you can see this information for the NJGPA by state, uh, by district up top, state on the bottom, and as we're required to report as well, based on race, gender, and program. Again, this was a field test given for the first time last year. We continue to look at this data as a team, what it means, it's fairly consistent with the data that we've seen in other assessments from last year as well. So there weren't too many surprises here knowing that COVID had an impact on education, on assessment results as well. Now we'd like to talk, let me stop there and see if there are any questions at the board or would you like us to just continue through? Looks like it sounds like construction to me. Yeah. Uh, it's certainly not a computer. Okay. There's but, some construction work going on. Yes. I, I just had one. I'll try to talk over the noise if you want. Um, can you just like what was this test? Was it was this test? Uh, was it um, multiple choice? Was it was it uh, two hour? Like, is there anything that you can sort of equate it to? Is it SAT like? Can you give us some context? I guess? So if we look at it, if you remember the HESPA exam that was given way back when, uh, back in 2011, a change was made to the assessments and we brought in the NJSLA where everyone was given an assessment every single year. Uh, that wound its way to the New Jersey Supreme Court where they said, no, our statute is every junior must take an assessment as a graduation requirement. So that finally made its way. The Supreme Court said, yes, that has to happen. And this assessment was granted. So it is very similar to the former HESPA. The ELA has pieces on it with writing all of those pieces and mathematics. So that's the closest thing to think of, uh, of what this assessment is like. And then every junior class will take it going forward? Moving forward, that okay. is absolutely correct. Okay. So for all of the juniors and junior families listening out there, this is an assessment that your children will take, that you will take if you're a junior at the end of this year as a graduation requirement. Thank you for that question. Hello. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's a requirement and with a grade requirement also so there's two pieces for graduate for graduation requirement there's an assessment requirement that students must take in ela and mathematics to demonstrate mm -hmm. proficiency and then there's all of the credit requirements 20 credits in english language arts 15 credits in mathematics all of those pieces so for our current seniors that assessment piece is set in abeyance they do not have to pass that but they do have to meet all other local pieces um, for credits attendance all of that i, I hope that so answers bad, your question I I don't want it, but a, a kid that doesn't do very well testing mm -hmm. that could negatively affect his or her ability to graduate. Students will be able to take the assessment again. So same thing when it's given in the junior year, they will have another opportunity to take the GPA assessment again. They will also be provided with certain courses as well that they're able to grow in their understanding. Currently, there is then that second menu, right, of assessments that students can take. That's currently what's in place, SAT, ACT, ASFAB, all of those assessments that are there. And finally, if they're unable to do that, there is a portfolio assessment that students are able to take to demonstrate proficiency for graduation. Okay. Is this a new assessment? Yes, last year, this past June was the, this past spring was the first time this assessment was given in the state of New Jersey. Okay. This is why you're hearing about it for the first time for juniors, NJGPA. You will hear it more moving okay. forward, but it was the first time. And that's when you can see here, uh, the governor stated, passed a law in July mm -hmm. saying it was just a field test. So is it replacing anything? The former HESPA, if okay. you remember. All right, thank you. Okay, perfect. So let's move on to our next assessment that is Start Strong. This is the second year uh, that we have provided this. And let me turn it over to Mrs. Kopas. Good evening, everyone. I'm here to kick off the Start Strong portion of the presentation. Start Strong is a required state assessment administered in the fall. The NJDOE first required the test in 2021, and they required it again this fall in 2022. The Start Strong assessment data produces information to be used as standards-based complement to the resources used by educators in their classroom to evaluate the needs of students and were administered quickly in person and provided results to teachers and administrators so the information can be used to make instructional decisions. Start Strong 
fall assessment is not, or do, it does not replace local standards-based benchmark assessments that we already have in place. And they do not replace the spring 2023 NJSLA statewide summative assessments, nor are they predictive of their results. It's important to note that this test is short. It does not assess all standards. So there are not enough questions for the test to be predictive of NJSLA scores nor are they indicative of how students will succeed in a grade level or in a particular course. The test is designed to give teachers a starting point for where their students are and how to support their learning. As a district, we use this, this information along with other data points to determine where students are at the beginning of the year. Start strong fall assessments. The student scores are based on various levels or into three categories. The three categories are strong support may be needed, some support may be needed, or less support may be needed. And we as teachers and administrators dig into that data to really determine what those standards are. And again, remember, it's, it's a small number of standards. So really, it's a, it's a benchmark in the beginning of the school year for us to look at, along with our other data to determine uh, where student strengths are and where they need support. The NJDOE cautions us, we should not compare any individual student, school, district Start Strong data to any state level data for Start Strong, nor should comparisons be made to any NJSLA data. And Start Strong assessments were not designed to predict future student performance on the NJSLA. Instead, data should be used to inform instruction. So when we look at this next slide, you can see our 2021 scores versus our 2022 scores. Again, remember you're looking at different cohorts of students. Sorry. <laughs> you're looking at different cohorts of students, but just so you can take a, take a quick glance on the left-hand side, the three columns are how our grade levels did in, uh, in the various grade levels in 2021, and then the three columns on the right-hand side, how our grade levels did in 2022. Again, remember, there are the three levels, less support needed, some support needed, and strong support needed. And again, on the left-hand side, our 2021 scores compared to our 2022 scores on the right-hand side, um, for grades eight, nine, and 10. And then we average all together for all grades four through, through 10. Um, just as a side note, NJSLA scores uh, students in grade three take the NJSLA, but for Start Strong, it's students in grades four through 10. And now I'd like to turn it over to, sure, to Dr. Greer. And so as we're required to report as well, you can see the same information broken down. So these are the pieces grades four through um, through 10. Less support are those green bars, and that's what you can see where less support is needed. Uh, yellow, some support. Red is strong support. We can see here, this is just for ELA as well, for our students, Asian, Black, Hispanic, and white broken down by race. We have here by male and female. As well, you can see distribution by level. We will continue to dig into this data, right, when we see some of these pieces. It's understandable that our English learners need strong support on the ELA portion of this assessment. So we understand that, but we'll look to dig into some of these other pieces as well. Now for mathematics, you can see we've set up the data in a very similar fashion. Um, for the pieces here, uh, compared to last year, the 2021 data, and now we have the 2022 data as well grades four, five, and six. I don't know if you wanted to come back, but we do have Mr. Ziobro would like to chat a little bit about the mathematics at this point. So what one piece, Start Strong is an assessment that is given at the beginning of the year and it is designed to assess prior year content for our students. Um, this works well at most levels, but uh, it does not work as well for us for our Algebra One and Geometry students. We have a uh, curriculum sequence where we advance our students a little bit faster. And so therefore, 
we've decided to push some of what would be considered eighth grade standards into algebra one and those geometry standards from eighth grade into geometry. So these start strong assessments have topics and questions on there that our students have not been exposed to. So the low scores in algebra one and geometry are expected. And unfortunately that data isn't as valuable. There are some questions on there that are good and we do look through those questions, but there are not as many questions on there on those assessments for us to, to be able to dig into. So we use our other benchmarks and other internal testing pieces. Thank you, Mr. Ziobro. And the one piece that was very important that he shared at the end is that we have our own internal benchmarks that we use with our students as well. Start Strong data was shared with teachers almost immediately that they had access to be able to view, see how the students were doing and make it actionable data for the students that they were working with. The Start Strong reports will be shared, individual score reports are called ISRs, will be shared next week via post, uh, US postage uh, to all of the families. So you will be able to see that if you have a portal uh, for Pearson portal or a testing portal, the letter will show you that as well. They will show up there. So on this screen, you can see that algebra one, why that is so high. Mr. Ziober just talked about um, that population of students that are there. You can see here mathematics for all of our grades, Asian, black, Hispanic, and white. Here is female and male, followed by these pieces for mathematics that we will dig into looking at our free and reduced lunch students that are there, our English learners and students with special needs. In terms of science, same thing. This assessment is only given in grades six, nine, and 12. You can see the data here compared from last year to this year um, with some of the pieces that are there for the science assessments. Again, we will be receiving more data tomorrow from the Department of Education to be able to disaggregate and dig into with our teams of teachers. And I will say our supervisors do a very good job with that. I know Mrs. Cope has talked in the past about the elementary, the touchstone meetings that happen that are looking at every single student. Our supervisors in six through 12 are doing the same things with teams of teachers to dig into data. You can see here broken by grade six, nine, 12 in all grades. Here it is broken by our student populations by race as well, male and female, followed by all levels, all grades for free and reduced lunch, Section 504, students with special needs, and general education. So again, what we've seen here, this data is consistent with other data points that we have received from last year. If you remember in October, we were here to talk about the NJSLA that was given. Start Strong is showing the same pieces, the um, NJGPA. It's consistent with the data points. Every student was impacted by the pandemic, right? We say that, but that is a true thing. When you look at these numbers, these are students that were impacted, families that were here. When you think about what was happening and think back to last year, I know it's like a time warp sometimes, like, wait, what was last year? What happened? Where are we now? These are real students. There were impacts. We use this data along with multiple sets of data to really assist our students and see the needs that they have and how we can help them. Again, the teachers have used the Start Strong data right from when it was available to them. As we're approaching the mid-year point now, the next round of benchmark assessments will be taking place in ELA and mathematics, looking um, at data to be able to see how our own students are growing. So this is just one piece as we are uh, sharing out within the assessment that we're required to by the Department of Education as well. At that, I'll open it up to questions. Any questions from the board? Any any tea leaves reading on whether Start Strong will be back next school year? <laughs> that is an excellent question. I think uh, you would see a lot of surprise that many of us saw it again this year. So if you remember, Start Strong was supposed to be one year meeting the federal requirement for the assessment the year before that was not given. Lots of educators were very shocked that it was back again. And then when the window was extended, so the reason why we have this data now, it just came in like two weeks ago that we were able to do it. They extended the window. It's the tea leaves are really tough to read on this one. I will say I was at a Garden State Coalition meeting and they said to plan for it next year as well. I assume they made a contract with Pearson. <laughs> That's what I'm assuming. That's a good assumption. So Dr. Greer, looking at the data from 2021 to 2022, mm -hmm. some of the results of 2022 where students, I think it was students uh, didn't need as much, dropped 
What do you think were the reasons for that? So we have looked at that, but some of the pieces and what we started to do was look at the flip side as well is how many needed less or that strong support that, yeah, went the yeah. other way. We're really cautioned that even the Department of Ed puts out says, try not to look at the two years. This, this assessment okay. wasn't created that way to do that. But that's what we do as our team now, as we look at this well, and yeah. say, hey, what what is this? What might that be? We just need the time to be able to really dig into it to, to see what it might be. It's okay. tough to answer that question right now. All right. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Any other questions? All right. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. And that concludes the superintendent's report. Thank you, Dr. Varley. Um, committee and liaison reports. Any committee or liaison reports from the last month? None from me. No. Jordan? None from finance or curriculum. Robert, anything? No. Jordan? All right. Well, I guess one thing I think we talked about it. I went to walk this past year. It was a fun year. We made it in and out, a rain in and out, but it was a good time. Uh, business minute, Julie, please. Uh, not too much to report this evening. Just going to um, note a couple of agenda items. Uh, tonight, we will be approving the revised facilities use schedule that was discussed at the November 17th meeting which uh, creates a new category for nonprofit educational organizations. There are also <clears throat> resolutions on tonight to continue our participation in the Alliance for Competitive Energy Services. This is um, a co-op affiliated with New Jersey school boards that allows us to bid um, for gas and electric. Uh, in essence, we compile uh, a bunch of school districts across the state uh, to try to seek volume discounts. Um, interesting, uh, two interesting items. The state requires school buses only be in service for 10 years. We have one bus coming to the end of its useful life, and we would like to dispose of this bus uh, while we still can get some value for it and purchase a new school bus with existing lease purchase funds. So the resolution uh, identifies that certain funds were earmarked for Wi-Fi upgrades. Uh, those Wi-Fi upgrades have not yet been purchased and um, Mr. Scare has been kind enough to forego that purchase so that we can uh, buy the bus, which is a more pressing item given supply chain delays and so forth. Uh, the funds will be redi redirected to the bus purchase uh, that has been approved by the lease company, and we will go through the Hunterton County Co-op in order to purchase that bus. Um, there are a number of donations on the agenda this evening. The Highlander Booster Club is donating a washing machine to replace a very old unit that is used by the athletic trainers in high school. Uh, we will also be accepting social emotional learning books for our elementary schools, courtesy of the Kimberly Ann Wilson Foundation. And a last minute entry, the Berkeley Heights Education Foundation is donating five televisions and all the necessary mounts and hardware and electronics to have them mounted throughout Columbia Middle School. So they're used to increase uh, communications and highlight student achievements. And we thank everyone for their generosity. And I just wanna wish everybody happy holidays. Thank you. Any questions for Julia? Yeah. You'd mentioned that there's a requirement that the buses are in service for a minimum of 10 years. No, no more than 10 years. Max. No Max. more than 10 years. Max. So is that what you're saying is the expected useful life? Because it's not always the same thing. No, but we're not permitted. The uh, state of New Jersey does not permit buses to run longer than 10 years for schools. So um, what, do at, we, what do we do with them if there's existing useful life beyond 10 years? We sell them. We, we have to get rid of You can't, you can't have them in service. But we are getting at this point, and that's why we're trying to sell it now while there's still a year okay. and a half left of useful life, because it has a value to sell to another school. Um, if not, then I, we would probably put it for um, municipal bid auction or uh, gov deals, and okay. and after that we could publish it somewhere else. And there might be somebody who wants to paint it green and drive around, you know, Fun the country nice. or something. Sure. Uh, but as part uh, for a public school district in New Jersey, ten-year maximum life mm -hmm. usage. I have a quick question with the Wi-Fi that's yes. like the switching of the funds from yep. Wi-Fi. Well, what's the new timing for any of those upgrades for Wi-Fi? Um, here know? comes Mr. Scara now. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, 
Mr. Scara, <laughs> since you, you, you are foregoing your Wi-Fi upgrades this year very generously so we can get the bus, um, Mrs. Young wants to know what would be the timing then for you to be able to do these Wi-Fi upgrades. Ooh. My hope is the following year. Okay. What we're trying to do is stay ahead of needs, but this need outweighed the other. So we'll, we'll try to build that into this year's budget. That'll be part of the budget Thank process. You. Just truly on the bus, are we looking at any other anything new? I know they were starting some like funds for electric. I know it's a big so, thing. So um, Mrs. Sheehan looked into those opportunities for electronic electric buses, excuse me. Um, and the current um, I don't want to say rebates, but the incentives that are available, uh, according to the research that she did, and she is still following up, but we as a um, most of those funds were going to underserved communities yeah, okay. uh, and we did not qualify. And then to purchase an electronic electric bus uh, versus the regular uh, diesel bus is a lot more expensive. So um, financially, if it's coming all out of pocket, doesn't uh, doesn't make sense for us. No, that's what I was wondering if what I know there was a lot of incentive programs. That's what was my question. So, so far, we have not been able to qualify. Uh, she continues to look into it and we will obviously keep an eye out. Um, there was a similar program for HVAC, and it was the same thing. Um, primarily, the funds were going to underserved okay. communities. Okay. Any, Thank you. Any other questions for Julie? All right. Uh, comments from the public on agenda items only. During this portion of the meeting, district <laughs> residents and staff are invited to address the Board of Education on agenda item, action items only. The board requests that individuals state the name, their name and town of residence or school of attendance for the record. Uh, the specific action item they are commenting on and ask that all remarks be directed to the board president or designee, not to the individual member or staff. The board asks that members of the public be courteous and mindful of the rights of others individuals when speaking. Specifically, comments regarding personnel matters are discouraged and cannot be responded by the board. Students and employees have specific legal rights afforded by the laws of New Jersey. The board bears no responsibility, nor will it be liable for any comments made by the members of the public. If a matter concerning a district staff member is of interest or concern to a resident, the matter should be referred to the responsible building principal, superintendent of schools, or the Board of Education, either by telephone letter or email. Although the board may not respond to items raised during the public forum, all public comments will be considered. Please note that if any members of the public becomes disruptive during the meeting, the board president may terminate the participant statement. Continued disruption may result in removing from the meeting or adjournment of the of the me meeting or adjournment of the meeting. Each speaker statement will be limited to three minutes in duration, and I'm glad I don't have to read this ever again. Um, <laughs> any comments from the public on agenda items only? Seeing no one, we'll move to minutes. Can I have a motion to approve the Mr. meeting? Mr. President, yes. before you begin, um, oh. if at all possible, oh. I'd like to uh, make an amendment um, to the uh, meeting minutes letter D mm -hmm. uh, to amend them to indicate that uh, Mrs. Joy Young abstained from the entire executive session. So she recused herself from the entire executive session and I would like to just put a footnote on those minutes um, prior to approval. Okay. Thank you. So can I have a motion to approve of meeting minutes, the regular meeting minutes from November 17, 2022, executive session minutes from November 17, 2022, special meeting minutes from December 8, 2022, and executive session minutes from December 8, 2022, as amended by uh, the business administrator. So moved. I have a second. second. Discussion? Second. Mm -hmm. Any discussion? Uh, roll call, please, Julie. Mr. Chantrilly. Yes. To all. Mr. Hyman. Um, a yes to A and B, abstain on C and D. I wasn't present for December 8th. Mrs. Penna. Yes. Mrs. Oops, not <laughs> Mrs. Young. Um, yes for A through C and abstain from D because I recused myself. I'm sorry, Mr. Hyman, did you say no or abstain? Abstain. Oh. Got it. Thank you. And Mr. Duquil. Uh Yes to A and B, abstain to C and D as I was not present for the meeting. 
So I don't know. Um, so the November 17th minutes pass. I don't know that we can pass the December 8th minutes. I only have two yeses and three abstains. I'm going to say I can't do it. I can only state that the, the practice of approving the minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Excuse me. The practice of approving the minutes is just a good procedure. It's not really required necessarily by law. And you, um, so the board members who decided to abstain are also permitted to vote to approve the minutes, even if they were not present at the meeting. It's the practice generally implemented to abstain, but it's not required. If you believe in the practice uh, and, and uh, how the minutes are kept, and they look like they've been kept in an orderly fashion, the whole practice of approving them is really for just, um, Transparency. For transparency, but also for uh, if it's required six months down the road or two years down the road that the board has reviewed the, the minutes. So and I would just state that uh, with that in mind, I would recommend that the members who have abstained consider if they would wish to reconsider to vote for the minutes or you just would not have your those minutes approved at this point in time. Right. Otherwise, I'll uh, put them on the January 12th agenda. Yes. And ho we'll hope for the best then because we're going to have two. Yeah. Right, and they're going to abstain as well. Not, yeah. I mean, again, if it's a matter of procedural. I would, I would, I'm sorry, I was saying if it's just to say. If it's just to say that we approve putting this in the record, then I would vote yes to that. I just can't vote yes to the content because I'm not sure what was there the base, yeah. <laughs> so the basis for your approval of the minutes would just be that you are um, have looked at them they look to be in format your other board members have approved them who were at the minute at the meeting and that's the extent of the standard um, ideally you would abstain if you didn't need your vote but it's not it doesn't um, make it a defective affirmation of the minutes by the fact that you were not there, but I'll leave that up to you to decide. So perhaps we um, hold them over to January 12th and uh, Dr. Forger and Mrs. Stanley will be present at that time. Hopefully, uh, yeah, and they, they will, they were here, yeah. Those four votes would, yeah. would okay. uh, be sufficient. Okay, I don't thank think you. It's they were actually yeah. part of that meeting too. Yep. But, okay. Wait a minute, in executive session where they're not only four? Right, they're not here. Yes. So like Pam but, and- How can we pass them? If there were four in executive session and people who are only going to vote who were in executive session, doesn't that mean we have four votes even but, in January? Yes, but if I'm not mistaken, since it's only K well, through eight, not the high yes. school, what so, your quorum oh, is. The high yeah, George, yeah. Yes. Okay. So um, the quorum is four, not five. Is right. Four. Wow, I remember that. Nice. <laughs> um, administration. Um, can I have a motion to, it's going to be a couple things. First table item E, uh, unfortunately the girls volleyball team was not able to join us and then approve resolutions A through D, F through J for all board members and resolution K for Berkeley Heights only. So moved. Can I have a second? Second. Any discussion? Uh, roll call please, Julie. Mr. Chanchuli. Yes, to all. Mr. Hyman. Yes, on A through D and F through J. Mrs. Penna. Yes. Mrs. Young. Yes. Mr. Daquilla. Yes. Uh, education. Can I have a motion to approve resolutions A through I for all board members and re resolution J for Berkeley Heights only? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Mike, I just want to say, I think, uh, well, A, uh, I, I'm thrilled to see the cybersecurity course. Uh, mm -hmm. And I, in reading the attachments, there's great student interest. Obviously, it's hugely relevant in the world these days. Um, so great to see that. And, and also, um, as someone who's now more uh, paying more acute attention to all things related to college and jumpstarting, um, yep. uh, and, and someone who now knows more about that program uh, from one of our guidance counselors, <laughs> thrilled to see that here. And I will be sending a kid to that. So. Excellent. H. Great. <laughs> Thank you, Jordan. Any other comments? Uh, roll call, please, Julie. Mr. Chanchuli. Yes to all. Mr. Hyman. Yes to A through I. Mrs. Penna. Yes. Mrs. Young. Yes. Mr. Dequilla. Uh, yes. Personnel. 
Can I have a motion to approve resolutions A through R for all board members and resolutions S through Y for Berkeley Heights only? So moved. Can I have second. a second? Uh, discussion? No, uh, Julie, roll call, please. Mr. Chan Chuli. Yes, Swall. Mr. Heinen. Yes, to A through R. Mrs. Penna. Yes. Mrs. Young. Yes. Mr. Dequilla. Yes. Um, business. Can I have a motion to approve resolutions A through I for all board members and resolution J through L for Berkeley Heights only? So moved. You have a second? Second. Uh, discussion? Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Chanchuli. Yes to all. Mr. Hyman. Uh, yes to A through I. Mrs. Penna. Yes. Mrs. Young. Yes. And Mr. Dequilla. Yes. Um, finance. Can I have a resolution to approve? I'm sorry. Can I motion to approve resolutions A through D? So moved. Can I have a second? Second. Any discussion? Just want to say that I actually did the bills and everything looked good. Thank you, Angela. Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Chanchuli. Yes to all. Mr. Hyman. Yes to all. Mrs. Penna. Yes. Mrs. Young. Yes. Mr. Dequilla. Uh, yes. Uh, comments from the public. Same rules as before. Any comments from the public? You're not going to read it again? No, not at all. <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> Any comments on the public? Well, once, twice, sold. Uh, new business, any new business to come before the board this evening? Like I'll, I'll just note, uh, I uh, attended as a board member slash parent, uh, both a, a PTO and a booster club meeting just to sort of seed plant the homecoming concept ah. for next year. Um, and there's no action or anything yet, but there do seem to be some pretty good head nods and. Um, uh, and Clifton's been been hugely supportive thus far with some suggestions about perhaps an anchor weekend next fall. Uh, and I believe if I've got it right that uh, Mr. Nixon's suggesting we we have some students start what would be I think a club to uh, basically be the homecoming club to to figure out you know what they want to do. But I think it's cool in the sense That's that um, I believe GL's never had a, a mm -hmm. true homecoming. So, you know, this would be an opportunity for students and perhaps parents and obviously administrators and, and Anne and such to to think about like what does a modern day homecoming look like uh, in 2023. So nice. FYI. Cool. Very nice. Any other new business? Yes, Robert, sorry. Yes, that's okay. I, I know we're voting on the calendar in January. I guess two things. One, I would ask Jordan to please circulate a copy of the calendar that Mountainside adopts. Do you know what day, what is your meeting in January? I don't know our January full meeting date, uh, but it it will be, uh, we haven't seen a, a draft or anything yet, okay. but I, I assume we'll, we'll also approve. I, I know that Janet has said she wanted to wait until after the Gen 12 meeting of this board to approve, that I know. Do you all survey your uh, residents as well and staff? Not annually, no. This particular year? I have not seen a survey this year. I've not no. seen a survey. No. Well, if you could circulate, whatever, even if it's a draft and hasn't been adopted, I think we should sure. see it. I really want to be as aligned as possible with Mountainside or at least consider it. It's not to say we have to adopt it, but we should get a look at it and consider it. So just so you know, Ms. Walling and I are in constant communication. So her biggest concern was that we align on spring break. That was her biggest concern. So just so everybody knows, I do speak with her regularly. Okay. And the other thing is I circulated a copy of the calendar that Westfield adopted recently. So if you guys could also look at that before the next meeting, that would be great. Do you know, I didn't, I didn't even look, but do you know if calendar wise, like the alignment with um, like Votech, if there's, okay. Okay, that's it. Right. Any other comments, questions? I have a comment that we went, a few of us went to the National Honor Society induction yes. ceremony and it was, it was nice. It, was, it was really nice. It's just been nice to just over, you know, seeing the kids today, the acapella, hearing the 
brass, I don't want to call them incorrectly, band, quartet. Ensemble. And ensemble, thank you. <laughs> Seeing the robotics groups, like that's just what's amazing to me and, and makes it so fruitful as a board member to see how these kids are, are thriving. So it's, it's wonderful. And we need to uh, highlight the kids like that as much as possible. No, I agree. If you guys can continue on, I think it's great continue to highlight all the great things. You know, the beautiful gavel that the woodshop did, everything. <laughs> I yes, will do it. I will have yes, to do it one, one last time. Act. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. No, no, no. Right. I'm with you, Joy, though. There, there were there were like 55 kids. I was blown away because I think they so, the write their statements. I mean, some some of the I mean, there you got kids who are starting foundations, nonprofits, um, you know, podcasts uh, wow. and some of their ambitions. I you know, I felt I, inadequate. hundred percent. Yes. I, I, I was down in my seat by the end. I too was listening to all that and thinking, oh my gosh, how do these kids have time uh -huh. for everything that they do? Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's impressive to see the clubs and committees yeah. and the athletics and wow, oh, it was, it was a, it was a great experience. Yeah. It's very good. Excellent. All right. With that, I'm going to say thank you again, everybody. I appreciate all the comments that you guys made. Uh, it's been a fun year. Um, good luck to Gail and Dipti. You know, I wish you luck on the board next year. Um, and with that, can I have a motion to adjourn? Just quickly, Mike, oh. once again, on behalf of the entire board, we would like to thank you for your service, your dedication to the Berkeley Heights students. And uh, thank you for leaving the schools a little bit better than you found them. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> Can I get a motion to adjourn? Can I get a second? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Have a great holiday and a happy new year.